I'm glad to announce that this review was made possible with the help of Coilmaster, not only because all the help and sponsorships are needed, but also by all the great tools Coilmaster have available for us. Here is the box where the Geek Vape Aegis comes in. On the back you get a little warning basically telling you that although this device is designed to be shock proof, please do not damage the device on purpose. And then we also have some really brief specs also telling you that it meets the military standards to be shock proof and also the IP67 to be waterproof and dust proof. And of course we also have the company information, a hologram and a scratch code to check for authenticity. Inside of the box you are going to get the Geek Vape H's or EG's mod. Inside of this little box you also get a silicon 18650 battery adapter. An extra silicon plug and two extra screws for the top of the device because this device has a removable plate just in case you need to upgrade the firmware and you also get the EG's user manual. You also have the same instructions in French, German, Spanish, Italian, Russian, Danish and Dutch. So here is the start of the show, the Geek Vape Aegis. The weight of this device is 203 grams, 295 grams with a 26650 battery or 258 grams with a single 18650 battery and the silicon adapter. Let's start with a quick comparison between another shock and waterproof mod that I used so much in the past. This device is actually pretty old and it is the Heat Vape Invader. This device inside, it must be metal, really thick and solid metal, but on the outside, the black portion or the black area that you see on this device is all rubber. And I do apologize for the fact that the device is a little bit dirty at this point, but of course, a rubber will become dirty after a while. You just have to wash it. Yes, because it is waterproof. But once again, the entire black section of this device is basically rubber. And then the silver section is made of metal. And then here we also have leather. The leather won't be easily scratched because it is built inside of this metallic frame. And then here we have the control area with a plastic surface. And here is the top of the mod. On the top, you are going to find the stainless steel 510 connector plate that protrudes from the device just a little bit. And by the way, on top, we also have rubber. It protrudes from the top of the device just a little bit, but it is actually flush with the venting and firmware upgrade plate. But once again, stainless steel 510 connector with a spring loaded positive gold plated or brass center pin. The 510 plate is also screwed into the device so that's going to be a huge pro and here once again we have a little plate that says designed by Geek Vape. We have two screws and a couple of ventilation holes so this plate is not only going to cover a USB port, yes it is a shock proof and waterproof device but they still give you a micro USB port for firmware upgrades and we also have ventilation holes. Basically to have access to this USB port for firmware upgrades or maybe to replace the seal in case the seal breaks with some venting because that seal or that silicon plug it is also supposed to break just in case a battery vents inside. But to remove that plate you are going to need a T5 screwdriver and then you just have to remove those two screws. But then you are going to need something like an X-Acto knife and from one of the edges then you gotta remove this part like so. And removing this part you can see that we have the same exact holes and we also have a metallic burr because in case a battery vents inside the silicon plug is going to be pushed against that little burr and it is eventually going to open a hole on the silicon plug and let the battery vent. But to conduct a firmware upgrade on this device, you are going to have to remove that silicon plug. Once again, they also give you a spare. And removing this silicon plug, you can see that we have access to the micro USB firmware upgrade part. Once you do the firmware upgrades, you just have to replace this silicon cap or silicon plug back into place. This one or the replacement one. Then you just have to replace the top plate and screw the top plate back into place. Once again, using a T5 screwdriver. 
So it's not going to be the easiest process to upgrade the firmware on this device, but at least we have a shockproof and waterproof device, but we still have firmware upgradability, and that's going to be a huge pro. Now, once again, on this side, we see a lot of rubber, but we also have a metallic plate that goes from here all the way to here and it says GeekVibe and it is attached by two screws and then we also have once again this kind of handle with some really really nice and stitched leather and then we have the other metallic plate on this side also held in place by two screws and this one says Aegis. On this side we have the control area. The control area is going to be covered by this plastic. Then we have the fire button that protrudes a lot from the device and I do like this fire button a lot. Not only to trigger fire but especially to thumb fire because it bumps up that much. It actually makes it easy to rest my finger on the fire button and just press it with the bottom of my finger really nice and comfortable button then we also have the minus and plus buttons they protrude from the device a little bit but not as much as the fire button all the buttons are really really clicky the fire button has a little bit more travel than the others but all very clicky on the bottom you are going to find the battery door that is going to have this little tab that you just have to pull in order to unscrew and screw the battery door back into place. The battery door also has the serial number and unscrewing this battery door you can see that we have a silicon sealing o-ring sealing everything and here we have the minus inside is going to be the positive side of the battery of course. Now the entire battery compartment is going to be made of plastic and inside we also have the spring loaded battery contact. Now even though there's two little holes on this battery door, this battery door doesn't really have any venting. The venting is all done through here. And just to prove you that, here is the device that I did a couple of stress tests, I guess we can call them stress tests and you can see that the spring loaded battery contact is right here and it is mounted on the bottom of the 510 connector and then we have the wire that comes from the PCB to the positive pin and we also have the positive wire that goes from the battery contact to the PCB as well but you can see that even with the PCB in place there's a lot of room for venting all around. This here is also a sticker. So there's a lot of room for venting. And then even with the PCB in place, there's a lot of space around the USB port. So just in case the battery vents, the battery will vent all the way up through this opening, breaking that seal, and it will vent from this plate. Also, this plate has designed by Geek Vape in white. The final model doesn't. Some things are going to be a little bit different, including not having the negative side of the battery engraved on the battery door, because this one was one of the first prototypes they sent to me for testing. But here we have the screen, and here the front side of the PCB. Here is the back of the PCB. And here on the bottom, the controller that doesn't really have any identification. Here are the side plates also removed and they are actually kept in place inside of those holes, inside of the frame. So everything was really well thought. And then here we have still a little bit of rubber and here the leather sticker. Now here you can see that even if you break the front panel or if you get it removed as I did, on top of the PCB and screen you have this initial plate that is going to be screwed into place. It is going to be sealed all around. that once screwed into place, it is going to seal everything, okay? It is going to seal the entire PCB and even all the buttons.
Then we have this plate. The device is back into place. And the craziest thing is, even with all the damage, yes, it still works. But once again, here is the device. This device is going to use a single 18650 battery or a single 26650 battery. To use an 18650 battery, you just have to insert this silicon adapter, which is pretty, which doesn't look quite well but by being made of silicon it actually prevents battery rattle so you just have to insert that battery and close the battery cap now to use this device with the 26650 battery you just have to insert the 26650 battery into the device once again positive side in close this battery door or battery cap and turn it on with five clicks of the fire button. And that's the main screen. Now to use this device, quite, quite simple. Basically we have a fire button and a, a negative and positive buttons. Wherever the mode you are using this device, if you wanna adjust the brightness down, you just have to hold both the fire and minus buttons. If you wanna adjust the brightness up, you just hold the fire and the plus buttons. If you want to lock the power or the temperature adjustability, just those buttons, you hold both at the same time. And you cannot adjust anything, but you can still fire if you have something attached, of course. To unlock the adjustability, you just have to hold both again at the same time. Once again, to turn the device off and on, five clicks of the fire button. On power mode, of course, we have the mode on top. We also have the wattage, the battery bar, the attached resistance, the calculated amperage, the applied voltage, and the puff counter at the bottom. To change modes or to interact with the things you have on the screen, three presses of the fire button. Now, if you highlight power, of course, with the left and right buttons, you can scroll through the different modes, but with short presses of the fire button, you can scroll down and adjust things right here. Basically, on power mode, if you come to coil, you can also lock the resistance on power mode by pressing the minus button, and you can also reset the resistance by pressing the plus button. For instance, if I have an atomizer attached, which I press the fire button and it read the resistance, but if I still want to reset that resistance, resistance I press the fire button three times and yes it also tells you that the resistance you attached is too high for the wattage you are trying to run through that coil that's actually a pretty neat feature but once again three presses of the fire button and if you come down if you press once again minus you lock the resistance but if you press plus see you just reset the resistance now of course you fire you press the fire button and since you resetted the resistance, it's going to read the resistance again. We also have puffs here. Basically, if you press right, you reset the puffs. Even if you regret, you can press plus right away again and it doesn't reset. But if you press plus till you see zeros, if you hold fire button to come out of the adjustment, you can see that it just resetted the puff. So basically, even on power mode, you can lock and reset the resistance, but that's actually much more important if you're using the device in temperature control mode. In power mode, you can adjust this device from 1 watt all the way up to 100 watts, and it does round robin either way, okay? It has a stopper, so basically when, when you're scrolling, it stops, but if you press again, it round robins, and it does the same exact thing the other way. Now you can adjust this device in 0.1 watts increments, it increases the speed and then it increases the speed again that fast. Let's check the other modes by pressing once again the fire button three times. Next mode is going to be temperature control in nickel, same exact thing or is going to work the same exact way as temperature control in stainless steel and same exact way as temperature control in titanium or temperature control using your own custom TCR. The only difference is that you can see that it also tells you the TCR that it is using at the bottom on those presets so basically if you go with stainless steel temperature control now you have the temperature on the screen same exact thing basically it has a stopper but then once it stops if you press again you cycle through degrees celsius and degrees fahrenheit and it does the same thing 
the other way but on temperature control mode once again you have the temperature the battery bar the grease celsius or fahrenheit the attached resistance the wattage you can also select the wattage you want to have available when you press the fire button till the device limits you and then you also have the information about the tcr the device actually is actually using or the tcr that is saved or programmed on that temperature control material then once again we have the puff counter to adjust those things once again, three presses of the fire button, short presses of the fire button, you scroll down through all the different options. Once again, you can still lock and unlock the resistance as well as reset the resistance. Here in temperature control, you can adjust the wattage that you want to have available when you press the fire button till the device limits you, of course. And then once again, the puff counter that you can reset. The only difference in temperature control using manual TCR is that you can scroll down to the TCR and place the TCR yourself. Next mode is going to be VPC. This is going to be a variable power curve. Okay, You can customize your own curve. Short pressing the fire button and coming down you can see that you can adjust those five different points. Okay, So basically you can customize the first five seconds of your vape. Each one of those points is equivalent to one second of your vape. If you're vaping in VPC, that's what you see on the main working screen. Next mode is going to be bypass. Yes, on this device you also have bypass mode. What you see on the screen is actually the actual voltage of the battery. But of course, if you're vaping with bypass mode, when you're not vaping, you see the voltage remaining on the battery. But every time you press the fire button it tells you in real time the real drop voltage. All the information on the screen, no matter the mode, is always dynamically being updated and displayed to you. That's the GeekVape Aegis mod. Pretty robust, pretty well made mod with a lot of neat features, but still quite easy menu system. Pretty rugged housing, also a little bit heavy, but really, really comfortable in the hand and actually a pleasure to use. Alright, so that was the Geek Vape Aegis mod. But first, let me start by saying that I do love this style of devices a lot. Devices that I can use on pretty rough environments or simply devices that I can just take with me if I go to the beach. I really enjoy these kind of devices. And this one was a device that I used a lot a few years ago, the Heat Vape Invader Mini. And that's why I abused the hell out of this device. I started by dropping it from my window, giving it a three floors drop. Yes, a drop from three floors. Nothing really happened. I only had to clean it, but it wasn't really a drop on concrete or asphalt. And that's why I decided to run my car over it. Yes. I run my car over it. Running my car over this device did some more serious damage. Especially because I drove like crazy over it and being that due to the fact that I have a really heavy foot driving. But in the end, even with the front panel out of the device and some missing rubber on the side, the device was still working. So then I decided to wash it, resulting in a cleaner device still working. And when taken apart, I confirmed not to exist any water or humidity inside of it. Now let's move into the charts. Checking the resistance readings, you can see that this device is reading the resistances a little bit off. Now, regarding the power output, I was very surprised to see not only a very good step down, but also a very accurate device all across the board, but also a device that is able to give you around 100 watts in a really wide resistance range, even on a single 18650 battery or 26650 battery. Now, with that said, I do recommend those Aspire 20 26650 batteries or the iJoy ones those are pretty decent as well now with low batteries with the batteries drained down to 3.6 volts pretty much the nominal voltage you are going to get around 78 77 watts out of this device regarding temperature control you can see on the yellow charts that doing temperature control in stainless steel wire the temperatures are pretty low but if you dial the TCR 105 for single coil and 110 for dual coil this device is going to give you 
you a pretty decent and pretty accurate temp control. Checking the signal, this device fires insanely fast. I was able to measure 10 milliseconds delay at the lowest wattage, 78 milliseconds delay at medium wattage and still a pretty flat DC signal and 94 milliseconds delay at the maximum wattage and once again pretty flat DC signal and this time I actually measured firing the device in standby. This is the VPC mode and you can see that all those steps are gonna be equivalent to one second so basically you can customize the five initial seconds of your vape and then the device is still going to deliver the last voltage you adjusted on that little chart until the 10 seconds cut off. Here is the temperature control and especially on the right you can see that even though a little bit wavy it is not shaky and insanely up and down like a roller coaster so a, just a little bit wavy but the temperature control experience feels really really smooth because once again even being a little bit wavy is not way too shaky. Regarding the 510 connector this device has a really really good 510 connector with a little bit more travel on the positive spring loaded center pin that the most common devices ever measured by me and regarding the battery analysis since we don't have battery charging the only thing that I was able to measure was the lowest voltage this device is going to drain your battery down to 3.22 volts now talking about the pros and cons that are left to be said starting with the pros first pro the fact that it is going to be a pretty pretty solid slick and well constructed device really solid in regards of noises basically there's no noises at all there's no button rattle there's no battery rattle inside everything is amazing on this device another huge pro the shock and waterproof capabilities another pro the fact that this device is going to fit 30 millimeter diameter atomizers just perfect and by the way this is the one that i damaged and you can see that it is still working and by the way this is the one that i damaged and it is still working indeed another huge pro the fact that we have firmware upgradability and the proper venting done another huge pro the fact that that this device is going to take 18650 or 26650 batteries and the other thing that impressed me the most especially comparing to other devices that take 26650 batteries like the Wizmac Presa 100. The thing that impressed me the most on this device is the fact that even out of a 26650 battery I was able to get a pretty pretty good performance. Sure it drops down to around 77 78 watts once you are running the device with low batteries but that's perfectly normal. <laughs> Now let's talk about the cons. The first con is going to be the fact that they don't state some specs on this device like for example the resistance range even though I was able to fire this device down to 0.07 ohms well I was actually well I was actually firing a 0.07 ohm coil but the device was actually reading 0.08 ohms. Another con the fact that you are probably gonna get a few scratches especially if you abuse the device you are gonna get some scratches on this front plate because it is made of plastic but you can still clearly see the screen another con the fact that outside you are still going to have a little bit of trouble trying to see the screen if it is a really sunny day so I would like to see a more clear cutout to display the screen and another con the fact that the device is reading the resistance is a little bit off and the fact that the temperature control is a little bit off as well but as long as you dial those TCRs you are gonna get a pretty accurate temperature control experience but let me now finish by saying that some of those cons won't probably be a con because even the devices shipped to the reviewers are gonna be upgradable and since I beta tested this device for GeekVape the retail ones the, the full production ones will arrive to you already with all those corrections made so that's going to be a pro now with that said let's give away one as always to enter this giveaway you just have to be my subscriber if you're not you have to subscribe to my channel and you gotta fill your information in a Google form which is link in the description down below and you gotta like this video as well so one geek vape Aegis mod same color as this one and one winner as well once again the winner is going to be responsible for shipping and once I randomize all the entries I'm gonna get in touch with the winner myself with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. I'm Daniel, DJLSB Vibes. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you found this information useful, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe my channel and my website, djlsbvibes.com for the next videos and next giveaways. Also, if you want to support my channel and what I do, you can do so on Patreon. Links are always in the description down below. And I will see you all on the next one.